Hari Guru Purima. Um, we can welcome Swami Nikhilanand, then everyone can turn this way as he will speak to us for the next 30 minutes. After that, there's going to be a chanting, Arti, and then we will do Guru Poojan, and then you're all invited for Mahaprasad today at the lunch hall. Jai Shri Radhe. Srimat Sadguru Sarkar Ki Prathamam Sadgurum Bandi Shri Krishna Tadanantaram Guru Pa Manam Tra Tam Shri Krishna Stvamalat Manam Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Agyan Timiran Dhasya Gyanan Janashala Chakchurun militam ye na tasmai shri gura Dhyanamulam Guru Murti Puja Mulam Guru Padam Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam Bhakti Moolam Guru Kripa Yo Brahmanam Vidadhati Purvam Yo Vai Vedanscha Prahinoti Tasmai Tagmangha Deva Matma Buddhi Prakasham Mumukchur Vai Sharanamaham Prapadye The Divine Souls will have a few minutes of Kirtan chanting Jayati Guruvar. After that, I'll be addressing the question of how to recognize a true Guru on this occasion of Guru Purnima celebration. Jayati Guru Vair, Jayati Guru Vair, Jayati Guru Vair, Pyaare. Jayati Guru Vair, Jayati Guru Vair, 
जयती गुरु मर प्यारे जयती गुरु मर प्यारे
जयति गुरुवर प्यारे जयति गुरुवर जयति गुरुवर जयति गुरुवर प्यारे जयति गुरुवर जयति गुरुवर जयति गुरुवर प्यारे जयति गुरुवर प्यारे बोलो श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की Today we're celebrating Guru Purnima, the full moon where we honor the true Guru. Purnima means whole, complete moon. And the meaning of Guru Purnima is Purn Sharanagati to the true Guru. Sharanagati means surrender, Purn. Complete surrender to the true Guru is the true meaning of celebrating Guru Purnima. Today I'm going to be taking up one question, how to recognize a true guru. And as I go along, if folks have questions as well, because we try to make this time during our Sunday morning satsang interactive, we'll take some time to take some questions from those of you who are here. So feel free to, uh, when I let you know that it's time. If you have a question, you can raise your hand and we'll bring the wireless mic around to you. But the first question we're starting with today is a very important one. How to recognize a true guru? Our scriptures tell us, Durlabham trayam evai tad daiva nugraha karakam manushyatvam mumukshutvam mahapurusha sambhava Three things are most rare to receive. Number one is a human birth. So it is rare and valuable because only when you're born as a human do you have the chance to attain God. Thus, only human beings have the opportunity to realize the ultimate goal of existence, which is to know and experience God. That's the first thing. You get a human birth, that's a great rare opportunity. Secondly, to have the desire for God. So many people receive a human birth but don't have the desire to find God in this life. So if someone has received both the human birth and they have a desire to find God, that is even more rare. However, these two are not enough. You need the third rare thing, Mahapurusha Sambhavaha. You need the association of a Mahapurush. In other words, a Guru. Our scriptures tell us that Tad Vigyanartham Saguru Meva Bhigat Chet Samit Pani Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam. Mundako Panishad says if you want to know God, you need the guidance of a Shrotriya Brahmanisht Guru. Shrotriya means knowledgeable in all the scriptures and Brahmanisht means established in God, themselves having already attained God. If someone receives the association of such a saint, that saint, true God realized saint is called a Mahapurush, the association of a Mahapurush is the third most rare thing, having received a human birth, having the desire to find God within one's heart, and getting the association of a true Mahapurush in this life, such is, there is no greater wealth and there's no greater good fortune in this whole world. Such that Tulsidas Ji says, Guru Binu Bhavanidhi Tarai Na Koi Jo Biranchi Shankar Samahoi It's impossible to find God and it's impossible to cross this ocean of Maya, the ocean of cosmic existence without the grace of a true Guru. And then Naratanu Bhavvaridhi Kahu Bero 
सन्मुख मरुत अनुग्रह मेरो करण धार सदगुरु दृढ़ नावा दुर्लभ साज सुलभ करी पावा जो न तरई भव सागर नर समाज अस पाई सो कृत निंदक मंद मति आत महन गति जाय तुलसीदास जी सेज having received all of this that you need in order to realize the ultimate goal of your existence in other words you got the human body you got the association of a true saint who's going to guide you towards god and you still don't make an effort to attain god in this life well you've squandered the most rarest of all opportunities you've missed this golden chance to give your heart and soul what you've always wanted to be with god thus understanding the importance of the guru even if someone knows this much and also knows adau shraddha tatah sadhu sangoth bhajana kriya bhaktir samrit sindhu that first you have to intensify your desire to find god then god himself will arrange for you to meet a true saint even if you know that much okay i can't find a saint on my own i just have to pray to krishna and he's going to arrange for me to meet a saint the question is still how do i recognize that i've met a saint what if i use the wrong criteria to judge who is a saint and who isn't and i turn away from a true saint or i start following someone who isn't a saint we need to understand some criteria although the main qualification of a saint which i already told you is they are god realized and there is no physical characteristic that could tip us off that this person is god realized you know it would be really easy for us if after becoming god realized a person's skin turned blue then we said that's a saint i'm going to make this person my guru but nothing like that happens god doesn't give them a a diploma and sign it and then you can verify yes this is krishna's signature this is a a real diploma this person is god realized we don't have any definite way like this of knowing who is the true guru and who isn't or i should say we don't have any quick and easy way however there are some criteria that we can consider so we need this knowledge there are a couple of things that you can help to recognize who is a guru and there are a couple of things that you can recognize when someone is not a true guru and in fact they're posing as a guru let us start on the positive side as i mentioned we don't recognize the guru according to any physical characteristics we also don't recognize the guru according to their gender their age i mean we've had female and male saints through history we've had old and young saints i mean dhruv was 5 years old when he became god realized you could have made him your guru at that time so let us not focus on the external let us focus on the internal even you can't focus and say this person's lifestyle isn't right they're living like a king they have servants they drive a mercedes they live in a mansion Oh, a guru could live like that there have been saints in history who were kings who lived a lavish lifestyle and there were saints who were beggars we've seen both there were saints who were married and who had children after god realization and there were saints who remained celibate although all saints are mentally celibate because they're beyond calm crodh lobh etc 
That means we have to find some internal way. And the internal way of recognizing what's inside the saint is by looking within ourselves. Think of it this way. If you have a coil, a copper coil of wire, taking you back to high school physics class. If, you, if you've made a coil of copper wire and you insert a magnet into the center of that coil, what happens? A flow of current is induced. Something like that happens through the association with a saint. The saint is representing God on earth and emanates a powerful divine vibration, a blissful, gracious vibration. We are the receptors. We can receive that vibration. And when we receive that vibration, something happens. Our love for God grows and our attachment in the world reduces. Like coming close to a fire. You're shivering in the cold and there's a strong fire burning over there. The closer you go to the fire, the more your cold is reduced and the more warmth you receive. The closer you internally associate with a saint. Remember I said the meaning of Guru Purnima is Purna Sharanagati. Internal association means mental surrender to the saint. So the closer we come to that mental surrender, attaching our mind to the saint's mind, the more of that vibration we receive. In other words, the more of the grace of the saint we receive. And what is the internal effect on us? Just like that current being induced to flow in the copper coil, there is an induction. Something starts happening in here. We start feeling true love for God. Something melts inside our heart. Something, a, a thrill, that current that starts to flow is experienced as a thrill of love for Radha Krishna. Where did that come from? From the association of the saint. And when that happens, our heart starts to feel consoled. We, the loneliness we've felt since birth, even when we're amongst our family and friends, that loneliness also starts to reduce dramatically. The desperation to find material enjoyments also reduces because our worldly attachments reduce. Why? Because we're feeling a sense of consolement and happiness brought on by the saint's grace that's giving us that connection, direct connection to God. This, I would say, if you only remember this much today, remember this, that the grace of a saint induces love for God and reduces attachment in the world. The saint's grace actually purifies our heart. So the connection with the saint becomes stronger and stronger. Thus, love for God goes on increasing and attachment in the world goes on decreasing. Yatha yathatma parimrijyate sau mat punya gatha shravana bhidhanai tatha tatha pasyati vastu sukshmam chakchur yathai vanjana samprayuktam. In the Bhagavatam, Shri Krishna is telling Uddhav about this process, how the more devotion somebody does, the more their heart opens up, the more love for God they experience, the more they realize Krishna's direct presence with them, the more intense and real their rup dhyan becomes. But what a lot of people don't know is that this doesn't happen just by, Krishna is mentioning by listening to and thinking about chanting, meditating upon his leelas, all of this happens. However, without the catalyst, now I'm taking you back to high school chemistry class, 
right? You can put all the elements of a chemical reaction in a test tube, but without the catalyst, nothing's going to happen. You can meditate on Krishna's leelas. You have all the ingredients there, but without the catalyst of the Guru's grace, the reaction doesn't take place. Love for Krishna doesn't grow, at least not at any significant rate without the grace of the Guru. So this is the number one way to identify that you are having the association of a true saint. Krishna arranges for you to meet with that saint. You have to follow the instructions the saint gives for how to do devotion. That following is surrender. That creates the connection between you and the saint. Then the saint's grace flows into your heart and induces this transformation that I just described. Now you have the means of judging. Remember, it's all internal. Whether that saint is wearing jeans or that saint is wearing a dhoti or that saint is 10 years old or 50 years old, none of that matters. What is your internal experience? Are you starting to go through this transformation that I just described? This is how you judge it. If this is happening, then that's it, you know you've found a true saint. And you're, if, however, you're following the instructions of the saint, you're surrendered to that saint, and you're not getting any of these results, then you know you need to look for someone else, that you have not found a true saint. Thus, this is the most important way of identifying a saint, by following their instructions for how to practice devotion, and then through that, you're surrendered to the saint. You should be receiving that saint's divine grace, and that would cause this transformation and these devotional experiences that I described. In addition to that, someone could say, you know, last night I described the classes of saints. There are very few people in the world who provide the kind of clarity, for example, that Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj provides when it comes to the goal. Why am I doing devotion? I followed so many different teachers and tried so many different paths and meditations before I came to Kripaluji Maharaj. And nowhere was the ultimate goal clearly described. There were hints here and there that, oh, you may have this experience or you may have that experience. And, but nothing was clear that, look, you're here. This is where you're trying to get to. These are the experiences that will happen along the way. As you progress, this will increase. And in the end, this is the ultimate thing you're going to get. None of that was, ex was explained in any place that I went. Now last night I shared the classes of saints and the classes of divine bliss and those of you who are here to hear that, you have to understand, look at how precise the goal is, right? You're not just saying I want to attain God, you have to be this precise, I want to attain Sakar Brahm in this form with this Bhav, so you have to be that specific as far as what relationship you want to have with God. I want to have samartharati madhurya bhav with Radha Krishna in divine Vrindavan. This is the level of precision that's required for someone to proceed on the path. So what I'm saying is, even in the explanations, in the giving of knowledge, the saint reveals their divinity with this ability to clarify and be so specific and precise. Whereas other people may be giving nice sounding lectures, but the saints lectures actually clarify exactly and precisely and they remove confusions and doubts. There's one more thing that sometimes you can perceive from a saint. Stambha svedo tharo mancha svarbhedo thave pathu vai varnya mashru pralaya ityashtau smrita 
Bhaktir Samrit Sindhu says there are eight symptoms of divine love that sometimes may appear in the body of a saint. I told you the saint is internally one with God, but externally may not give us any hint of their internal status. Sometimes, however, that ocean of love, the ocean of divine love that the saint contains within him, overflows. Could be during Kirtan, could be during a description of Radha Krishna the saint is giving, but certain symptoms of that divine love may appear in the body of the saint, like trembling of the saint's body, tears of love, tears of longing, a change in, a dramatic change in the quality of the voice, in the throat of the saint, a dramatic change in the complexion, profuse sweating, or even unconsciousness. These are a few of the symptoms. This is rarely seen. It's not something that we can always rely on. However, if we have this knowledge and we ever have the good fortune that such a divine revelation were to happen in front of us, at least we could understand, the theoretically we could understand what we're seeing, that we're actually seeing someone in their state of union with God, and that's expressing through their physical body. However, this is something that we may have to spend a long time with a saint before we would ever get to see such a what we call sattvic bhav. So these are the three main ways on the positive side. What internal effect does the saint's association have on us? The clarity and precision of the saint's words, the way the saint gives knowledge, and the sattvic bhav, ashta sattvic bhav, that may appear in the saint's body. That's up to us to take the time to delve in to the saint's teachings, to sincerely associate with the saint and see if we can get these experiences. That takes time. However, it is 100% reliable. You will never be fooled by this because you yourself have to judge your own experience don't go by what someone else is telling you, oh, this is a true saint, this is not a true saint. You have to go by your own experience, so you yourself will know. Now, there are a couple of ways that people get fooled that I will briefly recount to you. Or you can say, if you see somebody who's posing as a saint, who is doing some of these things, then you can just politely keep your distance from them. We don't need to personally criticize anybody. However, for our own well-being, spiritual well-being, we do need to understand how some people who aren't saints may be trying to influence us. So one is a saint, a true saint, doesn't pretend to give worldly boons or blessings. This may be shocking for some of you. In fact, the majority of people who go to somebody they think is a saint, they go with the idea, I will get this saint's blessings and therefore my son will get a high score on his SATs. I will get this saint's blessing, therefore I'll get the promotion. Oh, my green card has been hung up for three years, I'll go and get this saint's blessing. This is not what the blessings of a saint are for. I told you the saint's blessings induce the current of love for God in the heart. That's it, nothing else. The saint does not involve or interfere in our worldly matters. If a disciple is very close to a saint, a saint may give some personal advice on how to navigate, how to structure their life in order to maximize their good devotional sanskars and minimize their bad worldly sanskars. 
But these are personal advices that the saint gives to help the devotee in their devotional path, not to maximize their material welfare. Our material welfare is going to be determined according to our past lifetimes, good and bad actions. We're already going to get those results. The saint doesn't need to interfere. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ji says in the words of Sri Krishna, Ei bada murk, amaya bhaje mange vishaya sukh. There can be no greater fool than the one who worships me and asks for worldly happiness. Krishna is the ocean of divine bliss that gives perfect satisfaction forever. And this world is full of all things that give temporary and that too not fully satisfying happiness. So Krishna is saying you want you're just going to come to me and ask for more and more of that? What's the point of that? Ask me for divine things, divine love. That's what the Guru has. The Guru is in possession of that. Then why would the Guru try to humko behkaenge kyon ye sab dikha ke? Jab asli cheez apne paas hai aur wo dene ko taiyar hai to ye khilwad se humko kya behkana hai? Why would he want to distract us from our true goal of God-realization by giving us all worldly things that we don't even need? So the true, if somebody is sitting up there saying, oh yes, my, my friend, you will have this, I'm blessing you with this thing, just stay away from that type of person. That's purely commercial. Someone who is just telling the people what they want to hear in order to gain a greater following. Similarly, if somebody is showing some kind of miracle, now it could be they have some real power, but one must know right up to the topmost yogic siddhis. Samadha vupasarga vyutthani siddhaya. Yoga darshan tells us that those siddhis, those yogic siddhis are also mayik. They have nothing to do with Radha Krishna, divine love or divine bliss. They're mayik powers. However, in most cases nowadays, even if somebody is showing some powers, it may not even be a, a real power. They may just have learned some optical illusion, sleight of hand type of thing. If I go to Las Vegas and grab some top tier uh, magician and dress him like this and, and bring him to some mandir somewhere and have him start doing his tricks, people will say, oh, jai ho, jai ho, bhagwan ke avatar ho gaye. Right? They'll think, oh, look at the powers this guy has. And he's just fooling you. So we shouldn't get influenced by people showing such chamatkar. We say, chamatkar ko namaskar hai. But, in truth, we should be saying, chamatkar ko dur se namaskar hai. We don't want to say, bhir na nahi hai. We're not here to fight with anybody who is doing that kind of thing. Let them have their space. But we need to keep our distance if we want to actually find a true guru in our life. We shouldn't waste time following such false gurus. So the true guru has no interest in gaining a following by making an exhibition of some kind of power. The true guru has unlimited divine power, equal to God, sarva deva mayo guru. And yet the guru conceals that power because he's not trying to influence people with his power. He wants people who want to experience, they want their experience of the true love of Radha Krishna. That is the type of follower the Guru can help. The Guru cannot help someone who's just looking for some entertainment. Oh yes, wow, I saw that person displaying this power. Go to Las Vegas and watch a magic show. You'll get the same benefit. So we avoid those who are pretending to give material boons or blessings, and we avoid those who are showing, making some kind of public display of powers. They cannot help us if our true goal is God-realization. 
We can also avoid those who are pretending to give curses. I know some people who had a so-called guru and that guru told them, if you ever leave me, this bad thing is going to happen to your family. I'll curse you with this. I've heard many such stories. It's not uncommon, actually, for so-called gurus to make such threats. However, a true guru would never threaten an ordinary soul, a true guru, even if you're leaving them to go to another guru, they'll be happy. Oh, you'll get more benefit from them. Okay, go ahead. They have no jealousy. So if someone is behaving in such a way, then you can know that they are not a true guru. Whatever instances we've seen in our divine history of shrap, they're gurus cursing gurus. Aapas mein kabhi kabhi aisa hota hai, leela kshetra mein. Okay, it doesn't involve ordinary souls. Whenever there is some curse, it's between divine personalities, it's part of a divine leela, and it's a means of making some beneficial thing happen in the world. Just like Naradji cursed Sri Krishna to come and be born on earth and have monkeys as his servants. So we got the whole Leela of Bhagwan Ram and Hanumanji. Whatever curses happen, Parikshit was cursed by a sage to die in seven days. And because of that, the world got to hear the Bhagavatam, a public recitation of the Bhagavatam for the first time. These types of curses, these shrap, are actually beneficial happenings, divine happenings. They're not causing harm to anyone. So if anyone is threatening to curse you, you can also know this is not a true guru, but you can still avoid them. And finally, if any so-called guru is trying to show you a shortcut, just here, I gave you this mantra in your ear. Now that's it, you've become mine. There's nothing more for you to do. When you die, I'll meet you at the gates of Golok. And, uh, you know, I've already put you on the list. You'll gain entrance. You won't have to be born in this world ever again. There is no shortcut. Jagadguru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj always says, Karna padega bhagwan ya koi mahapurush karke nahi de sakta hai. Agar de sakta tha, so, in a second, we have to do the same thing in the second, we have to They can't. They do not have the permission. It's against the rules for God or a saint to make us become surrendered to them, make us God realized. We have to surrender our mind to them to receive their grace. Thus, we have to learn from the Guru the process of becoming surrendered. What is the path? What do I have to practice every day? And then I have to practice it. The Guru cannot make your mind become attached to or surrendered to God. The Guru can simply describe the process that you have to practice. Then the Guru will help you and grace you, but you still have to do it. So if someone is trying to give you some shortcut, there I gave you mantra, diksha, and there's nothing more for you to do, such things are deceptive. Again, it's more of a commercial thing, trying to be able to claim you as a follower by deceiving you into thinking that now, oh, I took mantra from this guru, so now I'm trapped. I can't go to any other guru and... Uh, but such situations are not real. It's more of a psychological hold they get on you. If someone gives you a mantra or gives you a name of God, it should be with the explanation, this is how you meditate on God in order to become surrendered and develop love for God by singing this name, repeating this mantra. It's not just some kind of shortcut. So with these pieces of the knowledge, knowing on the positive side how to identify that you've actually associated with a true guru, and on the other side, knowing the signs that someone is not a true guru, you can avoid those who are trying to fool you, and you can not waste your time in that, and you can keep praying to Shri Krishna, and with his grace, 
When you are ready, he will arrange for you to have the association of a true saint, and then with the knowledge you receive today, you'll be able to identify that indeed, you are receiving the grace of a true saint. Although you have to be patient, it may take weeks or months to start to see that internal transformation. So on Guru Purnima, where we know the grace of the Guru is the means of attaining God and the true meaning of Guru Purnima is to become completely surrendered to such a Guru, such a true Guru, now you have the required knowledge to help you in identifying who is a true Guru and who isn't. So now we'll take some time for some questions and then we'll finish with some Kirtan. Would anybody like to ask any questions about this topic of Guru the path to God, God realization, anything that came up in your mind that you need clarification on? Uh, yeah, they, uh, thank you. Uh, as a, a chela or, or like uh, we are following the guru every stage of life, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, for education, for deviation or for music. So basically, do we have any responsibility or like liabilities during the guru punima? Do we have to, like which guru do we need to follow or we have to commonly um, uh, some we, we have to do with the guru? Good question. Let me clarify the, the use of the word guru. Guru can be used in a very strict sense and it can be used in a more open, casual way. So when we say, oh my uh, Sangeet guru, my uh, school guru, my language guru, we have different teachers, we may call them guru, right? But truly the meaning of guru in a strict sense, spiritually speaking, is Girati agyanam iti guruhu, girinati gyanam iti guruhu, gumrauti iti guruhu. Ved says, the true guru is the one who eliminates the darkness of ignorance and eliminates the bondage of maya. In other words, the true guru themselves is God realized and can also eliminate your mayic bondage and make you God realized. When we talk about Guru Purnima, celebrating Guru Purnima and surrendering completely to a Guru, it means in the strict sense of the spiritual Guru, not the more relaxed sense of calling any teacher a Guru. Does that make sense? Here in the front, yes. How do we continue when the Guru has left his physical form? Very good question. So there are two situations. One is, let's say, in most cases, this is true. That if a person has surrendered to a Guru, while that Guru was physically present on earth, whether you met them physically or not is not important. You made them your Guru internally while they were physically present on earth, then even after they leave the earth, they will continue to grace you. And uh, that guru-disciple relationship is maintained for the rest of your life, even though the guru may not be physically present on earth. But no new people could make that departed guru their guru now, right? If they hadn't done that while, they, while the guru was physically present. However, if the guru has gone, but you had established that guru-disciple relationship before that, that continues for the rest of your life. Now, I've mentioned a few times in recent months that in the case of Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj, there's an exception. So, there are still people who hadn't even heard of him before he, he finished his physically visible leelas here in this world. And yet people even nowadays are 
creating that internal connection by watching his lectures, reading his books, hearing about him, seeing his videos. And they make that internal connection. They say, I want him as my guru. And they start getting his grace and having that internal transformation that I was describing in my lecture today. So it means that in the case of Sri Kripaluji Maharaj, at least during the current time, we have an exception. Even now, more people can make him their guru. So it probably means even though we can't see him physically, his time on earth is not finished. His avatar may not be finished, so we can't say, oh, he left and went back to the divine abode. We just say, he finished his visible leelas that we could see in this world, but he's still here helping the souls. And souls can still adopt him as their guru if they want to. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, such a nice speech, and it was really enlightening. Um, this is my first time hearing this speech, so I have a question like, what makes or what are the qualities that make someone guru? Is it like they have devotees which follow them, hmm. they have the knowledge, or like what is that thing that makes someone a guru? Kind the of. one main qualification, they themselves have to have realized God. So you can put it this way. Have they met Krishna face to face? Have they experienced the unlimited bliss of Krishna? Do they know God? So you can say a practical experience of God, not the theoretical. Theoretical they get automatically. Once they experience God, they have the total knowledge of the scriptures. Nonetheless, our scriptures define a true guru as someone who is Shrotriya Brahmanisht. Brahmanisht, God realized. Bhagavat Prapt. And Shrotriya, having the total knowledge of all the scriptures. Both aspects are mentioned in the scriptures. But really, out of the two, the one is included in the other. If you get God realized, you get divine knowledge automatically. So regarding the followers, you could say there could be many saints in the world whom nobody is following, but they are still qualified to be gurus if someone were to follow them. <laughs> so a guru is a true saint, a true God-realized saint that you make as your spiritual master, spiritual guide. That becomes your guru. Any other questions? Here in the front. What does 100% surrender means? None of us are 100% surrendered. So luckily for us, the guru deals in percentages. Guru says, okay, you're 19% surrendered. That means you have a 19% good connection with me. So you're able to receive 19% of my grace. And that grace then has its effect and purifies our heart. So then tomorrow you're 19.5%. And the day after, 22%. And we keep increasing. So the guru is working with us to clean up that connection, clean our heart. So our percentage keeps growing. Shri Krishna comes when we get to 100%. It means... Total love, total attachment, 100% faith, that's surrender. Surrender is more of an abstract uh, type of idea, but if you think about what does it look like when you're surrendered to someone, it means you love them. It means you have total faith in them, that's surrender. You depend on them, that's surrender. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Anyone else?
Okay, let us finish with a few minutes of kirtan. After the kirtan, we'll be having arti, and after the arti, those who would like to, will be having two things happening. We'll be getting the opportunity to do charan paduka pujan of Jagadguru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj to honor him on this day of Guru Purnima to help elicit that sense of surrender and submission to the Guru. It's a very sweet feeling, sweet surrender. So when we bow down before the Charan Paduka, the image of the Guru's divine lotus feet, it's supposed to elicit that feeling of sweet surrender in our heart as we submit ourselves to the divine Guru. So with these sentiments, those who would like to come up after the uh, after the arti, you'll have the opportunity to do pujan of Jagadguru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj on this Guru Purnima day. And after that, we'll be serving lunch prasad in our main dining hall. So let us finish with a few minutes of kirtan. Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru. Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. 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 Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru Govinda, 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 Govinda. Guru Govinda Guru Govinda Govinda 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 Guru Govinda Guru Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda, Guru. Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru 
Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. Guru Govinda, Govinda, Guru Govinda. श्री कृपालु जी महाराज की